Welcome to the 16th annual Roger Ebert Film Festival. And Mark, the organist, before you leave, thank you. That was fabulous. Roger used to say, not many film festivals these days start with an organist. So I'm so happy that we did. And I see his seat back there. I'm going to sit in it. And I'm just going to imagine him embracing me and enjoying the movies. I am thrilled to be back here because, no, nope, no, nope. <laughs> not yet, because in this last year so much has happened and I just didn't know. Looking last year when we were dancing with Tilda Swinton during our grief, it helped so much, didn't it? It made me think about Roger and his joy. And I didn't know what was going to happen looking forward a year, how I was going to feel. And I, you know, it, 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 somebody quoted me in, in, in an article, and it sounded a little probably silly to say this, but I said, I've never been a widow before. I don't know what to expect. I don't know how to act. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And so sometimes as I go along, I just say, what would Roger do? And you know what he would do? He would have a film festival. So, you know, that's the only thing that I know uh, to do. And he would also have the sort of lineup that we have for you this week. This is, I, you know, I'm just so, um, uh, I'm just so excited because we have the 25th anniversary celebration of Oliver Stone's Born on the 4th of July, and we have Oliver Stone. We have the 25th anniversary of Do the Right Thing, and we have Spike Lee. We have Young Adult, and we have Patton Oswalt. We have three women directors this year, guys. Sunday, we are gonna end with our uh, um, a music uh, film about a jazz musician from New Orleans, and it was put together by our very own producer, I mean, the festival director, Nate Cohen, he's the producer of that. We have so many good movies. We have two movies that, well, we had lots of movies that Roger loved because that's where we, that's where, I, sorry. Roger knows I never could speak in a microphone, so. Um, that's where this film festival started when Nate and I were putting it together this year. We started with which movies would Roger want to program? And so that was the basis for starting. And then we always add some new current films. And it just so happens that some of the current films, more current films that we are showing are movies that Roger loved and really admired. A movie called A Simple Life. And we have the director, Anne Hui, Hui here. And we also have Museum Hours and we have Jim Cohen. And these are movies that Roger loved. So to, when you start off with movies that Roger loved, you can't go wrong from there. So uh, that's one thing that we're going to do. The other thing that we're going to do is, OK, I've, I went off program already. 
I am so sorry. I just got so excited when I got out, of, out here and saw all of you. First, I would sincerely like to thank President and Mrs. Bob Easter, his, President Easter and his wife, Cheryl. Will you please stand? And we also have our Chancellor Phyllis Wise and her partner, Dr. Richard Messinger. Please stand. And to continue, we have the College of Media Dean Jan Slater and her husband, Dan Hargens. Please stand. So, the other thing, excuse me, just one moment. We don't have Tilda Swinton, but someone said, if you feel like doing it, we'll help you. But I don't know if we're going to do it or not, but I just had to see how far it was from here to there. Um, and now there's something I'm just a little nervous about. And that's, but I hope you all join us tomorrow at noon outside of the Virginia Theater. We're going to unveil the sculpture of Roger. This is truly a work from the heart. For 16 years, our travel agent for the festival was Donna Anderson, is Donna Anderson. Donna Anderson was in the hospital having a heart transplant, and she made it her mission to have that sculpture of Roger built. She said she woke up from her surgery, I forgot whether it was before or after the surgery, and she said she knew that a sculpture of Roger, excuse me, excuse me, Roger. She said a sculpture of Roger belonged in front of the Virginia Theater, and she said she wasn't going to stop until she could complete that mission. And you know, when she first told me about it, I thought, it will never happen. It will never happen before Ebert Fest. We couldn't get the artist. We couldn't raise the money. We couldn't do it in time. We couldn't find the foundry. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. And what if the park district didn't want it there? And so many obstacles. And Donna was determined. And Donna and her husband, Scott Anderson, said, let us just give us your permission and let us lead the charge. And they went to an artist, Rick Harney, who is, uh, who, who did two other sons of Illinois, President Abraham Lincoln and Adlai Stevenson, and he does beautiful work. And Rick Harney was not accepting any commissions. When she told him it was of Roger Ebert, he said yes, for another very personal reason, and I hope that Rick doesn't mind me saying this. Rick has a son who has, who's autistic, and he and his son used to talk about movies all the time. And one of the things they loved to talk about were Roger's reviews. His son loved Roger, loved his reviews, and Rick said, yes, I will take this commission because it's of Roger Ebert. And so Donna and Rick and Scott worked, and they worked with the town you know, the people of Champaign and the people of Urbana, and they raised the money, and we still have a little more to raise, but they said, you know what, let's just finish it anyway. And the foundry took the work, and I hope you make donations for it, because guess what? The sculpture is outside. We're unveiling it tomorrow at noon. And I'm sure it's a 
beautiful, beautiful piece of work, and I just feel a little nervous about it. I don't know why, but I think I'm nervous just the thought of seeing Roger outside the Virginia Theater again is gonna be so emotional. And um, something else that's emotional that I'm so happy about, um, we're gonna start the film festival with Roger. We have his movie, Life Itself, by Steve James. And Steve James, wait, yeah, this, applaud Steve, yeah. Because Steve James is a filmmaker that Roger really trusted and admired ever since his hoop dreams 20 years ago. Steve James is an Academy Award nominated director, best known for his films Hoop Dreams, The Interrupters, and Stevie. He's garnered numerous, numerous accolades, including a Peabody Award, a Robert F. Kennedy Award, the top prize at the IDFA, prizes at the Yamagata, Sundance, and Philadelphia Film Festival, two Independent Spirit Awards, two Top Cinema Eye Awards, the DuPont Columbia Journalism Award, and multiple Emmy nominations. And I, I just couldn't be more pleased with the finished product, as you will see. I just have to tell you, um, it will make you laugh, it will make you cry. I hope you brought your handkerchiefs and your, handkerchiefs and your tissue. Um, before I, I introduce Steve James, though, I must ask you to please give an applause for the festival director, Nate Cohen, and the associate director, Mary Susan Britt. just like to say one thing, um, in the history of this festival, this is the first time that we've actually started on time. Um, and we have Chaz to thank for that. Okay. Now, I do want to bring out Steve James and um, also is Kate, Cat White, back here. Oh, she's back there. You should be here. She is the producer with Cat Lee Productions. There is a Cat and a Lee in Cat Lee Productions. Cat White is sitting back there, Zach Piper, some other people who did the film. We thank them. And now, please, let's give a good old Eberfest welcome to Steve James. Wow. So great to be here. Um, gosh, if you could only see what I'm seeing. Um, thank you, Chaz and Nate and Mary Susan. I, we also need to mention, because otherwise I'll pay for it, is uh, a gentleman who was very instrumental in, in helping the film find distribution and success with our Indiegogo campaign. Maybe some of you saw the uh, stream, streaming from Sundance. I call him the emperor of independent film. Uh, John Sloss is here. Sorry. <laughs> so 20 years ago, Roger had a profound impact on my career in the way in which he championed Hoop Dreams and continued to champion it um, for the year that it was out. And he, he was a big supporter of my films over the years, um, continued to be such a, a great supporter. Uh, you know, when I got the opportunity to make this film, uh, I knew about Roger the film critic, <clears throat> and I, you know, admired him as a film critic. But I don't think I would have made the film if it had just was going to be a film about Roger the film critic. 
Um, when I read his memoir, the thing that was such a revelation to me was what an extraordinary life he had lived apart from what he did in film, which was incredible. And, and so, you know, the, the title life itself I think is apt because this was a man who embraced life uh, in all its rich complexity and adventure. Uh, he grew tremendously um, throughout his life and especially once he met Chaz. And he lived a, an incredibly courageous life as I know all of you know who are fans and, of this festival. So hopefully we've made a film that captures some of that. Um, before you see the film, you're going to see, uh, and uh, it's going to be called a deleted scene, and please don't take it personally, because this is, this is a scene that we had early on in that actually focused on this festival and on uh, Steak and Shake. <laughs> It did not make it into the final film, uh, in part, I think, because I don't know if Roger would have wanted us to put, feature the festival that he began in the biography. He, he and Chaz were both incredibly clear that they wanted this to be a candid and uh, a portrait of his life and their life. And, you know, just as he, if you've read his memoir, he doesn't talk about a lot of his own accomplishments. Um, I think that had something to do with it. I think the other thing is, is that I know that Nate is planning a film devoted entirely to this festival, which I can't wait to see. So I think that story will be told in, in great detail like it's due. So you're gonna see that scene first, and then the film itself, life itself. And then afterwards, we'll, we'll have a Q&A and we'll have some other special guests. And I keep hitting this microphone which I'm going to stop doing now. And, and anyway, it's just such an honor and pleasure to be here and look forward to seeing the movie and talking to you afterwards. Thanks. <laughs>